Thank you. Okay, welcome to the Mill River Educational Farm. It's an incredible pleasure to be back together with Richard presenting on um, beneficial insects, farmscaping. Um, basically, probably one of my favorite subjects, and Richard and I had a blast doing a lot of presentations in the um, 90s and the very early 2000s, and then Richard's been busy saving the hemlocks, and we haven't had a chance to get together. So I'm delighted to be back with Richard. Richard is my um, favorite entomologist, um, Dr. McBug, um, <laughs> and he gets it. He gets that it's not about how to, how to control the bugs, but rather how to balance it, you know, how, to, how to work with nature rather than try and rule nature. Um, and his, his um, credits, his, uh, you know, his resume and all that is, is stellar, including having been a Director of the Beneficial Insect Lab, was that? that yeah, the biocontrol administrator in the state apiary. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now he's, he's on his own, and he's always going upstream, <laughs> and he's already <laughs> proven that upstream is the way to go. And, um, and right now it's with the hemlocks, and we'll get to talk about that later on. It's very exciting. Um, I used our farmscaping principles and solved the hemlock problem. There you go. And not just me, but you know, a team. Right. But that's, and, we did it. Um, Great, great workshop. We're going to cover a lot of territory. Hold on, and please get that it's not about formulas. Don't worry if it seems like this is all way too much. All you have to do is get the principles, right, Richard? You don't have to memorize every bug. You don't have to memorize every flower. We've got it all down for you, anyways. Yeah. You know? What you have to do is get the principles, the concepts. You know? And you know, um, I'm the director of Milford Educational Farm. Passionate grower, and was fortunate enough to have somebody who listened when I first started discovering the principles we talked about. We'll probably tell that story. We usually do. But it was mm -hmm. Richard's support and validation that probably made it easier for me to keep pursuing the concept of just let it all grow. Just follow your heart. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention, and the answers are right out there. And that's basically. Story we're going to talk today. Yeah. Anything you want to say? A few years ago, he called me up right when I first got to the North Carolina Department of Agriculture, and I had joined Carolina Farm Stewardship Association, which many of you in here might be members of. And so, um, Pat, the original uh, the original interest that I had with Pat, Pat called me up and said that he could control Colorado potato beetle with ladybugs. And I'm just a PhD hot out of Virginia Tech, and I know everything in the world, and who's this guy telling me? And I cannot see how a ladybug and a Colorado potato beetle, how's that going to work? Well, he invites me down to, to Flat Rock, to Highland, Highland, Lake Inn. Highland Lake Inn. He's got an acre of potatoes there. He's got it all farmscaped, and we, we, could, we counted five ladybugs per foot. This field was red. And suddenly, all of a sudden, I'm like, holy cow. There's a whole lot I didn't learn in school. In fact, the thing that I had to do was unlearn. I had to unlearn all this other stuff and just say, what is out there? And that's where Patrick took my hand. And you know, he had been doing farmscaping, and there wasn't a word for it back then. And <clears throat> through some of the work that I was doing, and I was also at that time traveling to China. And I'm meeting these Chinese guys. And the, on, on, this is on uh, for Japanese beetle biocontrol. These Chinese guys are saying the same thing that he's saying, and I'm, I'm like holding my head because I'm like, holy cow, I thought Pat was crazy, but he's smarter than anybody that I had met farmer-wise. He knew, he had a bent for entomology. If I could get him 20 years ago to go back to school, he'd be a professor at UNCA or you know what I mean, but it, we actually, where we are right now is right where we need to be. Yeah, We're the people you got, and there's a lot of older folks in here, I'll just say this, and I don't mean this, uh, but a lot of us older folks can remember when people were anti-organic and we would go to meetings and people would yell at us and not believe what we're saying. And, you know, luckily I think we've sort of moved beyond that, um, you know, where, where extension agents won't tell you it's impossible to grow organic broccoli anymore and you're getting in an argument with them in a grower meeting. So we've gotten past that. Now we're at the point where 
you younger folks, all of us older people are the pioneers and we took the arrows. And there's a saying we used to use as a pioneers take the arrows and the settlers get the land, right? <laughs> so there's part of me, you know, back when they, people were yelling at me, it made me, I have an attitude that I can't get rid of. You other people don't have that. I want you to take what we learn here today and just run with it. We had to argue with extension. I had to go argue with Commissioner Graham. I would go over and argue with Commissioner Graham because he, he foolishly put me in the head of one of those departments and within six months they knew, they were like, oh my God, we've got a hippie in here that's organic, what the heck are we gonna do? And I'm sorry if that sounds funny, but that's the truth and now it's on tape. So what we were able to do then is we worked with Carolina Farm Stewardship Association and we began developing these principles that work for our area on the beneficials that will help you to have a garden out here like this, okay? So, what we ought to do real quick is everybody got a handout, and I know that it's all real tiny lettering and everything, but what we'll do is I'm gonna walk through this PowerPoint with pictures. Um, I'm thinking the way we're gonna do this. Pat, double check, I mean, do you wanna do this and then go out and yeah, catch no, stuff? Unless it takes so long, it looks like we're gonna miss the peak time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Peak bug time is 4 o'clock, by the way. I have an alarm set for 3.45, so at 3.45, we should kind of say, okay, we'll come back. Okay, yeah, let me, here, I'll move around. Let me, let me move around here. I'll get back here. While Rich was doing that, I, I want you to know that I was in farmscaping. I was celebrating the glory of flowers and getting that diversity was a good thing. When I got back, I, as a grower, I looked at the natural world, and things worked. And it was very, very diverse. So just trying to make sure that I had as much balance as possible, I made sure I had flowers and herbs mixed in everywhere. I also, a key thing that actually got those ladybugs really blooming was we had a tail crop. The tail crop was covered up with aphids at the tip. Now, personally, I love the tips of kale, kale as a vegetable. But I couldn't convince the chef. They thought they were bitter or something. I couldn't get them to use it. So I decided not to do anything about the aphids. Because I'd already learned that aphids, where I don't care if they're there, is a good thing. Because I started seeing parasites and stuff on those populations of aphids. And I thought to myself, well, the ladybugs and the other beneficials need those like aphids. I don't care. I mean, the, whole, the whole crop is going to get mowed down in about two weeks. It was like mid-April. It wasn't going to go any longer. You know, we're going to get the last kale leaves off and be done. And I was not nearly as astute as Richard takes me out to be, I had written on my calendar to spray BT. At that time, there was an allowed organic BT for Colorado potato beetle. Currently, we can't use it because it's all genetically engineered, the one for Colorado potato beetle. But at that time, we could use it. And I knew that the Colorado potato beetle would be showing up in large numbers from the past year at the Highland Lake in about the beginning of May. So I asked my coworker to go down without even looking you never spray without looking. You never tell somebody to spray anything without looking. You do not look at a calendar, you know? It's about what's out there. But at that time, I didn't know any better. I asked Seth Proutworth, a great gardener. He deserves tons of credit for our, Mr. Richard and I, my partnership and me understanding that I could pay much more attention to this because he went down there and looked and couldn't find any potato beetles. But he saw millions of ladybugs. He came back and said, Pat, I don't want to spray. I said, why? He said, there aren't any, any potato beetles and there's millions of ladybugs. So I went down and looked and I was like, oh my God. And I realized the potatoes were right next to that kale. And two days before, we mowed the kale. Now once again, I did a few things right. Because Seth was like, well, let's get all that green stuff right in the ground before it starts rotting. He said, should I plow it? Should I till it in right away? I said, no. Let the ladybugs and the other beneficial bees before you till it in. And sure enough, they left. Well, where are they going to go? Right? The, the potato patch. What do they do? Clean it up. You know? I happened to have flowers around it because it was a high on Lake Inn. They looked gorgeous. They made my heart sing and I knew diversity was good. They didn't know I was a farmscaper. You know? So to continue the story, and that's the, the big lesson from that is the most important thing is to pay attention and get that nature's your teacher. That's it. And we're all natural. We're part of nature. It's in us to get it. Okay, what I'm going to do now is 
Pat's going to be good cop and I'll be bad cop, right? So I'm, I'm going to make this reductionist now. I'm going to make it to the point where you're not supposed to do this, but here's how it goes. And I'm going to tell you guys after more than 30 years of doing this and being poisoned by every ag chemical known to man, there's five things you need to start with, and those are who, what, when, where, why, and how, right? <clears throat> huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So typically one of the things that we want to do as agriculturalists is we have to teach people how to think clearly because what we've done in our society over the past 30 years is we've made people not think clearly anymore and they look to other people for answers. And sometimes that's okay and other times it's not very good. So when I say who, what, when, where, why, and how, I'm talking about you. And then whatever bug you've got, let's take, you know, we could take Colorado potato beetle and we go through this list, I could draw this out, but we have like an economic threshold, we have an action threshold that we work from, okay? So this is all part of our system is we have a decision matrix made up for a lot of stuff and a lot of the decision matrix is what Pat says, which is if you've got a lot of beneficials out there, hold your fire for a day or two, you may not have to spray. And that happened with us. We got the first Golden Leaf grant in Watauga County to convert tobacco growers to growing organic broccoli. If I would have known then what I knew now, it would have been easier for me to say, I'm Osama bin Laden, and I'm going to convert you into being a Muslim. Because I'm telling you right now, I'm talking up in Boone, and the hollers up in Boone, buddy, and let me tell you, some of those growers up there, uh, you know, so we had our work cut out for us. And so I'm working with a guy named Charles Church, and we've got an acre of organic broccoli right across from his house that we'd farmscaped. Right about this time of year, I go up to his door and I knocked on his door, and I said, Charles, that broccoli's ready to harvest. And he said, no, it's not. And I said, why isn't it? He goes, we have never sprayed it. It's never been sprayed. So I've been in ag long enough, I just pulled out a pound of BT, you know, the old Dipel green thing, and I said, here, if you want to spray it, spray it, it'll make you feel better. And actually, in some ways, he was right, because he was a better vegetable marketer, and I was the bug guy, right? So for $10 to spray an acre to make sure there's not a worm in it, I'm learning from him, and he's learning from me. So for three days, we're cutting broccoli. The third day, he stands up, and all of a sudden, he goes, I can see right now this is going to make me more money than tobacco is. Boom, I had him, man. All right, and from then on what happened, I got Charles and said, well, you know, and this was a group effort, but I'm telling you the story here was we made a growers group called New River Organic Growers. Have you guys ever heard of that group? That group now has 46 farms. So, you know, we ended up, we started out small and we worked our way up and we taught all these guys the stuff that we're teaching you guys here, but we had to hold hands. Some of those guys didn't like I had long hair. Sorry, it's cold up there, man. I want to, you know, and the other thing was, is I used to work for the state. If you have long hair, when they're aiming at you, they go, is that you, Daryl? And then you got five steps. And you're going, you know, up in the mouth. I'm not kidding. You don't want to look like, I mean, for me, I'm telling you, because I used to be buzzed up with beer glasses, and I had people flip me off. That may sound crazy, but, okay, so you have your five principles, and the other thing that's real simple right here that we kind of I've meditated on Pat's thoughts, and what we've got this boiled down to right here is four principles, and then we'll go into them. And basically, it's space and time and food. You want to shorten the space that beneficials have to travel. You want to increase the time that they've got food, and you want to... Um, you want to um, increase the time that they've got food. Let's see here. I've got this all down here. And then um, you want to also increase um, plant structural complexity. And that's a, that's the other one. Yes, harbor. Okay. I've got to say it right. So let's start here. This is farmscaping. We're, we'll just go into this now. And this actually follows that handout some, so you can take notes. I think one of the most ironic things about this is the guy that came up with the term Farmscaping, his name is Dr. Robert Bubb. 
And I, I know Rob, I know Dr. Bug, he's in the Entomological Society of America, and he knew he was gonna be an entomologist from the time he was a little guy, and, and so I think that really helped us out a lot as he came up with this definition here, the deliberate use of specific plants and landscaping techniques to attract and conserve what we call beneficials, okay? Your beneficials may not be somebody else's beneficials. So you have a balance. The other thing that we always have to make sure, and this is the thing that I began, when I became an insect scout, the thing that I found out right off the bat was everybody's soil is out of balance, and if your soil has too much nitrogen, then you have to leave your out the wazoo or any of the plant feeding bugs that like to get onto the tips of, of plants. So one of the things we had to do, this thing fell, excuse me. Um, one of the things we had to do was we had to Make sure, yeah, sorry, I don't know what happened there. I'll just put it on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> That's good enough. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it was a it was a very interesting path for all of us to get where we've gotten. So here are these four main points again. You want to, these first two are actually the same ones. It's basically have the, have the right plants. 